to create the space whereby he communicates what that looks like, right? Yeah. So if he's going to be gone, if he has X, Y, and Z things to do, he creates the foundation of what that looks like. He sets the tone. All right, guys. Welcome to Burning Your Babs. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. A lot of women don't really realize what men really do. Like, so listen, so we have this, we have this strong spirit of this red pill community and this pink pill community where they're always disseminating a lot of hate towards the opposite sex. And what I, you know, through the process of this Dear Future Wifey podcast has been my, my goal to help eradicate that toxic masculinity, to eradicate uh, femininity where it's always degrading men. And so then, because we all need each other at the end of the day. Unless you don't want each other, then that's a different story. But we all need each other. And so I want to ask the men, um, what are some of the most important things that you desire in a woman? I'm going to start with you, old Travis. Uh, you know, this is a great question, but I'm ready for this one. I just did a podcast and we were talking about the trend that's been talked about with women going 50-50 with men. And what I'm looking for is a help me. And the reason I say that is because if you make a decision about me based on my money, what if I lose it? Then what are you going to do? So for me, I'm about doing what's best for your household. Right. And if that's 50-50 for your household, then we shouldn't be degraded because we're not paying the rent or we're not paying all of the mortgage or we're not paying all the car notes for you to just be on Instagram taking pictures. <laughs> so I'm looking for a help me. And, when I, and the reason I say that is because there is a lot of pressure on men when it comes to money, right. specifically in this city. Right, right. So for me, it's like, I want to help me. I want somebody who, even if I don't need it, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me want to get you pregnant when you want to go in your wallet and help me pay the bill. <laughs> need the help. Just the fact that you went down there and said, I got it, baby. <laughs> so I'm looking for somebody that wants to help, even if I don't need it. That's good. I'm going to piggyback on that. Like, me being kind of a quirky visionary, like I always see something, right? Like I'm always, like even when we got here to Atlanta, uh, I was in church. I was on my way to LA, like because my stuff had started going viral and I just figured I was going to be the next Will Smith. I was All right. Before this guy uh, go on, like Travis, what he says, right? Like he's looking for um, a helpmate, right? Yes. But the application that he ended up to apply, that's not what it means when the scripture says, okay, you know, uh, a woman is supposed to be a helper to a man. Okay? That's not what it means that, okay, you know, you're doing 50-50. This woman, uh, she just wants to help you by, like, you know, just that's not what it is. Okay? So, all these guys, they, they're describing things in a materialistic way. Okay? That's what they're applying these things to. So, she's correct. He's correct in saying, like, okay, what if I don't have money? What happens? Right? Like, when a woman is, like, is your helper, right? Like, you are a man. You are in charge of your household. Right? So, you have a vision where you guys are going. The woman is managing uh, your household. So while you're out there, you're doing things. This woman is helping you. You're doing things. He's helping you raise kids. He's helping you educate your kids. He's helping you, uh, giving you wisdom. He's helping you um, uh, praying together. So you, you are in a mission, a lifetime mission till death do you apart. It's not just in the simple things whereby like, ah, okay, I just want to buy this for you. Means I'm helping you. Like, no, that's not what it is. Like, you know, that's way too too superficial and too simplest uh too simplistic so it shows okay like uh this may need to get in their bibles yo but uh let's listen what uh we're more is saying gonna work as a PA. I had $7,000 and then I, I was in a church service and then the pastor, he was like a Baptist pastor so he was singing and everything. I was trying to decipher exactly what he was saying all the way. But I just remember he said he said you gotta have a giant to slay and you gotta have a king to serve. And I was like okay cool. Alright, I know the giant is this generation um, but who do I serve? And he showed me Ken Jones. Now I had already told my mom and them that I was coming to, a, to LA and I just went through foreclosure. There was a lot of stuff going on and now I gotta go back and tell these people off YouTube I'm about to go to Atlanta. Now YouTube wasn't big back then but I was right. making a little money and they was like you you should just think about a job, baby. You know, you're 30 years old, right? And so, <laughs> like, I can just remember, I, I asked God, he gives me this vision, and, you know, no knock to her, because, of course, it was a little, you know, outlandish. I was like, what's going to happen is, like, God would show me, he said, from YouTube, you're going to do speaking engagements. And then he told me to put the mic down from singing. He said, you're not a singer who speaks, you're a speaker who may sing, right? And so I got to go in and give this new plan to a woman who may not necessarily be spiritually mature enough to realize that I'm really locking in with God. But here's the thing. 
I was still in the back smoking my cigars. I would still have my Budweiser. So I'm looking at like, okay, maybe my maybe my character didn't live up to the talent. And so what I'm looking for in for for my next mate is for a person to say, hey, we got to work on that character. Not that I need a babysitter or a coach, but I want somebody to challenge me in that area because they see where I'm going, and then they say, I just want to challenge you in this area because this can be a hindrance for what you see and what you said, and I want to make sure that I get you there. I want to help you there. So in the terms of a help me, like to be honest, you know, God has blessed me tremendously. Like I'm not just looking for somebody like just because they rich, like we good, right? I'm looking for somebody who sees the purpose that God has in me as I explain it and wrap it out. And she has to be flexible enough to go to the next mission. We may not be in Atlanta. God may say, hey, I want you in Ethiopia helping kids for adoption. And I don't want to feel the pressure of going in like, well, baby, you know what God said? We have to go to Ethiopia. Like, I know there may be some conversation, but I don't want to be talked out of it. If God said it, I want to go for it. When I say that's so important. Amen. That is so important. That's the reason why I, y'all hear me oftentimes say I want a purpose partner. Yeah. Because a wife is a wife and a husband is a husband, but a, I want a wife and a purpose partner. And a purpose partner is someone that comes alongside your purpose and be able to come and help fulfill it. And y'all come alongside, uh, as a man, come alongside her purpose and help her fulfill it. Um, and that's why, and that's exactly what you said. You want a woman that once you say, hey, this is the vision, this is what I see, that she knows how to activate that faith. And that's so beautiful. Uh, let me ask you, Stefan, what are you looking for in a wife? I mean, there's a lot of things we can list. Um, All right, so before uh, Stephanie speaks, these guys, they don't understand what the scripture teaches, what a man should be, and what a woman should be, and it's showing, okay? Willie Moore just shared over there with us that he is looking for a purpose partner, okay? He's looking for a purpose partner. Guys, you can find that anywhere, even at Target, okay? You can find a purpose partner over there. It's not so hard. What happens when your co-worker is your purpose partner? What are you going to do? Leave your wife? So, they don't, they, they are pursuing their dreams. They're pursuing the things that they want at the expense of their wives, at the expense of their families. Fine, right now they're single, they can do whatever else they want to do. They are not accountable to anybody. But once you have a family, once you have a wife, yes, you had those dreams, right? Those plans that you want to go to Ethiopia. But then, okay, like, you know, you, your wife is pregnant. She's pregnant with twins. You, you're going to live with, you're going to leave your wife with the twins and you're all the way uh, uh, out uh, in Ethiopia. You see what I'm saying? Can you go together? I'm sure you can go together. So the idea is whatever vision that you have, does it work with your family at that particular time? It might be at that po more point in time, it's not visible for you guys to travel, but maybe like, you know, you might travel maybe when the kids are five, when, maybe when the kids are four. You see what I'm saying? Like the needs, your family is your priority, okay? Going to Ethiopia cannot supersede the needs of your family. So, but these people want a woman to come along and just to co-sign all these dreams that they have. Like, come on, guys, before we got married, we all had dreams, okay? There are certain things that you'll be like, okay, you just get up and go, but now you have kids. You see what I'm saying? Those luxuries are no longer available for you. You just can't get up. There is a baby who's depending on you 24-7. You got to feed, you got to do laundry, you got to manage your home. So there are certain things you just can't do because you are in a different season in life. But he wants to pretend, the, the thing that he have, like, okay, their season just has to be open. This woman has to co-sign everything that he wants. That's not how it works, okay? That's not how it works. How are you willing to sacrifice for your wife? How are you willing to pour into your wife? Would that vision be workable once you get married? It might be workable now because you're single, but when you get married, it might not be, are you willing to adjust? So I'm seeing a lot of selfishness with these guys, okay? But uh, what about you guys? What What is your take, okay? <laughs> oh, Susie Q, what I say? God told him, oh, I mean, these people, yes, exactly. I forgot about that one, okay? God told him, like, uh, where? God has already spoken in scriptures. So this is the problem, because now they're going to go to their wife and tell them, like, oh, but God told me. Like, no, God didn't tell you. So now be like, oh, this woman is getting in the way of what God told me. Like, no, nah, God is a God of order. He's not God of a confusion. Okay. If he brings you a wife, so whatever vision you have, whatever the vision that God has, it's going to be compatible with your, with your family. But when you're trying to do selfish things, then you're going to uh, experience that friction. And voila, people are heading for divorce. Look what's happening in Hollywood, right? Because these people are all about themselves. Because everybody wants to pursue their career and 
This is what happens. So, man, there's more with these people. <laughs> Everyone's purpose is first to bring glory to God. You know? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Because if your purpose is to bring honor and glory to God and your wife is the same thing, everything that you're doing is going to be fine. But these people are very individualistic, very selfish. Selfishness is what I'm saying. Self-centeredness uh, on display here. Let's watch more. The, the word that comes to mind is always feminine energy. That's what's extremely important to me. Why is that so important? Because to me, the foundation of feminine energy sets the table in the household. I believe that the woman's energy can dictate the energy of the home. So when they say happy wife, happy life, I think some people misconstrue that as just do what the woman says. But I view it as no, when you pour into a woman who truly loves you, she becomes 10 times more that woman. And so, to me, it's important to create the environment that allows her to rest in her feminine energy, but she has to know how to do that because there's a lot of women who they're waiting, they're saying, well, when I meet that man, I will be feminine. But the reality is if you don't exude it, you won't attract that man. Woo, there you see it what I'm is. Saying? There it is. So you gotta start with that. And there are men who desire that, who are willing to provide for a woman. You know, everybody has different things. Like Travis mentioned, it's what's best for each household. Some yes. people may want 50-50, and you gotta be real with yourself about what you're okay with. Because the only thing, and it's not to say anything against 50-50, but what I have noticed in coaching couples is, sometimes women will embrace 50-50 because they have the mindset of, I don't wanna rely on a man. But they don't really like their job. They're not really happy on that path. They really wanna be home with the kids and family. And so over time, <laughs> that job becomes very stressful, and it starts to transfer a lot of negative energy into the home. And not only that, the burden of the job, the burden of other aspects that she has to handle on top of that starts to cause her to be able to give less in other areas that are important to that man. So it might be sexually, it, it might be just attention overall. So you gotta be careful of what do we need to create the environment that we can pour into each other consistently and sustain this. You know what I'm saying? Love but it. ultimately, yeah. feminine energy for me is the big thing. As long as you, you I mean, not, it's not only that, but of course. that's a big thing. Of course, of course. You know what? Okay, so most of the stuff that he said over there, I agree with him. It's actually good things. But the issue that I do have with him as a Christian, as a believer, you need to be using biblical terminology, okay? Because when you're out here like feminine energy, what does that even mean? Okay, you want a home that's exhibited, uh, like in that has feminine energy. What what does that mean? Like, oh, you don't want that. You want a home that's, uh, you want a woman who's godly and you want a godly home. So everything that's happening in the home is Christ-centered, is God-fearing things. So the priority, everything that's happening in the home is, is, is upward, right? Like you're seeking to glorify God in your home. You're looking for a woman who seeks to glorify God. So everything he says over there, I agree. I just don't like him using, uh, quote unquote, the feminine energy. What he said is correct. Like, okay, there's so much stuff that women are doing that they shouldn't be doing because it's this feminism that has in, uh, infiltrated a lot of homes and a lot of women that they're just, you know, they want to have it all. They want to do it all. The boss babies. Wait, you're going to see uh, that issue coming out. So, yeah. But we continue. And, and I'm about to ask you next. So oh, go ahead and jump on. My bad, my bad. No, oh, yeah. Because a, a lot of women have had to, unfortunately, be the man in certain relationships. Right. Because, you know, that what you said sparked something. I've experienced that. And it's like, wait, wait, let me, you know, can I, can I get the door? Can, yeah. I, can I do the stuff that a man is supposed to, or the stuff that I crave to do? One. Two, you don't have to be, you don't have to be that in this space. Right. You can be the other amazing parts of what you want to be, what you crave to be. But I don't need you to be the man in this space. Let me be the protector. You can be strong. But I, I feel like a woman's place, and, and hear the whole thing before you say, before you throw anything at me. I feel like a woman's place, a woman needs to know her place. And I believe a woman's place is next to the right person. I feel like God took Eve and built Eve from Adam's rib. He didn't get her from a heel bone. So you're not supposed to be under your man. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't pull her from the, 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 the skull. So you're not supposed to be domineering and running everything. I think the, my woman's place is my teammate. You yeah. are my bulletproof I vest, I am yours. You are right here. If I'm out of pocket, you let me know, and vice versa. I think it's, it's a 50-50, I'm with the 50-50. I'm with it, that's the next t-shirt. I'm a, I want, I want my cup, I want my cup. 50-50, I want my cup. As a woman. Okay, 
So, man, this man, they, they just need to read up on this issue, okay? Some of the things that Christians said are true, but some of the things are not true. They sound good, but they're not, okay? A man, like women, you are, if you're married, you are under your husband's authority, Okay, in Ephesians, so that women you are to submit your husband. The terminology that's used over there is actually a military term. Okay, so somebody is above you and you're below them. Just because you're below somebody, that doesn't mean that you're less valuable. Okay, but that's how God has ordered things. Okay, there is a hierarchy in a family. You have a husband, you have a wife, and you have children. Okay, so yes, your wife is under you. But as a man, if you let that go, if you don't want to embrace that, that you are above your wife, you're going to run into all sorts of problems. Because now you're treating your wife like what he says, right? Like, okay, we are quote-unquote teammates, right? So, which means you and your, uh, and your wife are equal. So she can call the shots in the home. You shouldn't have any problem with it. Why? Because you guys are equal. You see what I'm saying? So just because, you know, uh, Eve was taken from Adam's rib on the side, that doesn't mean like, okay, then my wife is next to me, that type of thing. Like, mm, that's not what it means. Okay? She is your helper. She is following your, your lead. You are leading. She's following. So it is your responsibility to lead her in a godly way. That's why when God uh, came in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Garden of Eden, right? And we just ask Adam, like, Adam, where are you? Okay? It's not like God didn't know what took place. But Adam was in charge. Okay? So, and the punishment was that because you listened to your wife, then all these other things followed. And yet here we are. So I think what he's saying, okay, it will sound so good, but that's not what, you know, biblically speaking, it does not pass the test. So no wonder they're going to find themselves in, in, in this situation. And then when you provide that issue, then you, you make it okay. Like, okay, me and my wife, we're 50-50. So then it becomes like, okay, so if she's 50-50, she's going to be boss baby. So she's going to be like, hey, man, why are you telling me what to do? You went to work, I went to work. Like, okay, okay, why don't you do uh, house chores? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that, right? Because you guys are just 50 50 everything has to be equal like no it's not so when, once you start uh, having difficulty with those things you you will know that no it's not 50 50 but uh let's continue because there's more <laughs> No, I have to say that. Oh, I'm going to go to the women. Watch oh, this. Yeah, yeah. Go to the women. Yeah, I'm, go, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm unpacking this. I'm breaking it down because I wanted, I wanted the men to speak to the, the Red Pill community. And the Red Pill community is that community that always attacking women like crazy on social media. And so now I want y'all to be the voice to the Pink Pill community. And so um, so we're going we gonna to unpack this. So Stacey, go and lead us, lead us off. What are, what, what, I was going to ask you, what do you desire in a man? But you feel like you're about to say something else. I wanted to piggyback off of what Christian said. And the reason why is the woman that Stefan and Christian said they want it. You don't become that when a man shows up in your life. You, you're that before he right. shows up. So what does that mean? When your body says you're tired and you want to keep working, you listen and you yield to your body and you rest. Right? So that feminine energy comes before he shows up. When, you're, when your children are saying, Mommy, I need and you're tired, you say, Baby, I, Mommy has to rest. I can't do that right now. You don't overdo things. You see what I'm saying? But that has to start before he gets there. You're self-caring yourself to death. Right. And it's more than brunch and eating out and, and going to the um, lounge with your friends. Right? So you're loving yourself. You're yielding to your spirit. You're listening to God speak to you and tell you when is enough to win to drink your water so that when that king comes in and he speaks like Christian and Stefan and, and, and Travis and, and my friend Willie Moore Jr. I want to say the whole thing. Yeah, you know, and Lakaris, you know what that energy feels like because you've been listening to the God within you. Yeah. Okay. I want you to jump into the next question. I was going to ask you, um, what is it that you're looking for in a, in a husband? Because a lot of times, what and like the men we're talking about, what we hear on social media a lot is the finances. That a lot of women are talking about, I need a man to buy me this, I want this soft life, I don't want to do nothing, sit at home, pay for all this stuff. Uh, and so a lot of men, they feel inadequate to even approach y'all, and y'all want men to step to y'all, but they go, well, listen, if I'm not making X amount of money, well, why even ask you for your phone number? And so I talk to a lot of men that have said, yeah, Latares, I would, I would you know, shoot my shot at different women, but she looked like she cost too much. <laughs> you know, she looked like she expect too much. She looked like she wants me to 
pay all her bills. Or they'll go on a date with a woman and then they are expecting said gentleman to pay all her bills, you know, just in the dating phase. Well, for me, everything goes back to character. And I always, I have 15 character traits, not personality, and I know them in my mind, right? So I want a man who is caring, understanding, trustworthy, dependable, inspiring, complimentary, enhancing, loves God, provider, protector, professor, honors me and cherishes me. You see, I know them inside my body because I carry them with me. There it is. I'm not going to a book. My, let me just find, hold on, let me get my, my journal here. Hey, I'm not doing that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Caring, understanding, trustworthy, dependable, inspiring, complimentary, enhancing, provider, protector, professor, honors me, cherishes me. You see, I know them because I walk them. I teach, be the love you want to attract. If I am the character of the man that I want to attract, that's the best of me, that's why I haven't gotten married, right? Then I have to be those character traits. And I measure him by how he shows up in his own life, not by how he shows up to me. I want to see what you're doing with the people around you that you say Good. you care about, right? Good. So that is the man, that is first and foremost for me. I look at character, and I have, and I walk in the character. So let me ask you this, does money play a factor at all? Then why are you still single is my question. So all that doesn't mean anything, guys, okay? Like, those are the, those are the, you, you, that's your wish list, woman. What you have is your wish list, okay? So carry on with your wish list. Carry on with your wishes. But they're out here. They're coaching people, their relationships. So she says she carries all those things, right? So when she goes out there, she's looking for all those things. <laughs> Good luck finding those things. <laughs> Money for me? No. Let me tell you why. Because I know that in the character, the man will make the money. <laughs> okay, Whitney Gilbert. Okay, Whitney. Jesse. You know what? Can I go back to femininity for a moment? Because what I have found, and I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for. What was the question? I'm so the sorry. The question is, what do you desire? What do you want in a husband? Oh, I said I wanted to. Oh, you I said, said that? I said, <laughs> what else she said? I'm going to wait with everything she said. Well, first of all, I said I wanted to. I wanted Okay. I said I wanted a gentleman, but y'all gonna go ahead and just add everything she just said to that? <laughs> to your prayer request. God, you saw that. You just go ahead and just... <laughs> Give me that right there. Come Christian. and save my side, my mouth side. Go ahead, do Christian. Yeah. I, I didn't answer when you were asking the guys, um, and I understand everything that you're saying. I understand that. I, I pray for a woman that can handle a man pulling up and delivering that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and being uh, receptive and being secure, my schedule is crazy. Yeah. And if I'm operating in my purpose, which is the area of my life that God is consistently blessing, I want to be there. Yeah. Right. I need to be there. I prayed for this, so so I'm gonna be there. Yeah. She's got to understand that. She will. I, I yeah. can't. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't take off work if I got to turn in an episode and I got to write six pages a day. Yeah. She's got to understand. Christian, she said, I understand. She said, she understand. She said, I understand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Is that just hey, she, she's, there's a, amen. I got you, I got you, sis. There's a level. There's a level of understanding and a level of, of partnership yeah, yeah. and a level of flexibility. Yes, I have expectations and standards, but for my person, I've been some of those as long as I'm not compromising them. I don't mind that. Yeah. I don't. I, I want my, my woman needs to make me better when I'm falling short and hold me accountable yeah. and call me on my BS when I'm when I'm procrastinating or I need to get this done. And you know, you need that episode in by tomorrow. Why are you watching Netflix? <laughs> I, I need. You know, you need that part that accountability that's that's love yeah. the friendship the humor yes. all of that it's yes. never just been I, i'm 47. yes no all day twice could, on sunday could be more than 35. my, 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 my son is 20 and in the military no. so i got plenty of free time and and, and experience and a strong back so <laughs> um so so i say that to say i, I say that to say <laughs> In, 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 in a genuine, I, I told we had a conversation the other day, yeah. and and if it's not, if it's not the person that I, the woman I want to see under that veil, I'm not doing. It. Yeah. I'd rather be alone and yeah. watch Amazon Prime and have yeah. a glass of wine yeah. and enjoy my peace. Yeah. She's got to be worth getting rid of all of that. She's got to be even better than all of that yeah. by just being herself, yeah. pulling her table up to my table, yeah. not just pulling up to my table with an appetite and a BBL <laughs> and some enhancements and all of that. And I'm not knocking that. If, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But I need uh, natural women, women. They win it. Natural women is winning. Um, but, but pull up great as you already are. The kind of woman I want is the kind that's going to be great without me. Yeah. Did you guys notice that uh, when this guy said, if that's your thing, BBL or whatever, the whole place went quiet. <laughs> the whole place.
guys went quiet like ah. <laughs> but let's listen it's a bull <laughs> Because I get a chance to maybe make her greater. Yeah. She has. She's going to the, the the one that I want is going to hold me accountable and make me greater. Yeah. I'm gonna learn from her. Yeah. Sexiest thing a woman has ever done for me was teach me something. Yeah. Come on. The sexiest. There it is. Cause you can't take it back. You taught me. You can't. Ain't no take backsies. Ain't no take backsies. You can't take it back. So I need that. I need to be able to learn from you, be inspired by you intellectually, spiritually, emotionally. Show me where I can grow, what areas. Teach me how to be everything you need and allow me to teach you. I want that and I'm not selling for anything less. There it is. We agree. There it is. I just want to say, I don't got a BBL. <laughs> and I, I can teach you some stuff. You know how to speak Creole? Not yet. Oh, I can teach you how to speak Creole. I'll wanna, teach you I, after we done. I want to I wanna go around. <laughs> I don't know, man. She's trying too hard. She's been flirting with this guy, okay? But I'm like, you came to this place. You want to present yourself as a wife material. You've been so loud. Uh, just all over the place. I'm sorry. Like, to me, I'm like, uh, no, 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 no. Okay? If that guy is interested, like... <laughs> So, yes, so I forgot, you know, so Kristen, you see what he said? All the things that he's articulating, he wants a wife who's going to teach him. He wants a wife, like, those are your responsibilities as a man. That, you're talking about your domain, okay? Those are, those are your responsibilities. So you are looking for a wife that you can pour into, okay? So if you're out here looking for a woman who's going to be poor into you, you're looking for a wife out here who's going to keep you accountable, well, your homies can keep you accountable, what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? Leave your wife? Like it's, they, they're just all over the place. And everybody, the place just went bananas. Some, there's some kind of truth what they're saying, but uh, truly, truly, it's not anchored uh, uh, in scripture, you know? At least Stefan is the only one who was actually saying things. Like, okay, fine, here and there. But mm, this girl, she came out here all like this, and she's hoping to be a wife. <laughs> good luck, good luck, good luck. <laughs> we better get ready. Listen, I'm, I'm ready. And you know what? I did this. The way I put people on the stage, I did it like this on purpose. So I put Jesse next to Christian, and it worked out exactly what I thought. You set me up. I did you it on purpose. Up. I did it on purpose. What? I did, and it worked out perfectly. Oh Jesse got a knife. Jesse got a knife, and then I got a doctor over here on this side that can help me heal. So, yes, yeah, go ahead. I can make a quick point. I just want people to understand. Make sure you can handle what you're hoping for. There it is. So, to, to Christian's point, you can have a lot of women that want to be with Christian, right? But can they handle those moments that he's gone? Yep. Yep. Can they handle the attention he's going to get from other women right. and not project onto him that he's going to do something wrong and trust that he's going to stand strong in their relationship? Right. Can you handle the balance of time that may be harder for him to manage compared to the other guy who may not have a job or yep. who may work a, a more limited job? A lot of people are praying and hoping for something, and when they get it, they fumble it. There it is. Because they are not ready for it in so many different ways. So it's great to know what you want, but make sure you are ready for it and you can nurture it and you can keep the blessing that God has for you. Can I, can I add something? Go ahead. I completely agree, but I also think that it's Christian's responsibility since we're using him as an example. <laughs> to create the space whereby he communicates what that looks like, right? Yeah. So if he's going to be gone, if he has X, Y, and Z things to do, he creates the foundation of what that looks like. He sets the tone. So if he's honest while he's away, if he's, if he's doing everything that he needs to do and there's a healthy foundation there, then you're right. A woman will be able to walk in and not disrupt that, but she will go in the groove of what he's doing as well. But oftentimes people expect, have high expectations for a foundation they never laid in the, correctly in the first place. Hello. So if you don't lay the foundation correctly, then a woman walks in and she is unbalanced because she doesn't know how to move in an environment that he's not properly set. That's so good. I, let me say this. I agree 100%. But I know a lot of successful men, all right? And what they all have said, and y'all can, because all y'all here are successful dudes. Even when you tell women, a lot of women come into it idealistically. Like, because they want this so bad. They want this opportunity. So it's like, yes, I can do it. I can handle it. But they really can't. Yeah. And before you know it, weeks in, months in, whatever. Yeah, she said she can. She said she can. <laughs> it's a whole different story. So I do think there's a responsibility on the man to make it clear and plain. But there's a responsibility on the woman to make sure you are truthful in your ability to handle what he's saying the situation is. Good, good, good. And I have All to right. say this. I've been, I've been coaching women over a decade. And as a 
take woman from a woman. I can tell you that I totally agree with you. Most women show up, they don't even know how to affirm a man. They have no, it is the hardest thing for a woman to breathe life into a man, to tell him, to not just say her day was good, but just to really think about what does good mean? Oh my gosh, I woke up and the sun was shining and it made me smile inside. That inspires love from a man because you're showing up as something di different, what I call a T-A-W, a typical woman. Mm. And you don't want to be that because that will inspire him to love you. I totally agree with you. I talk to 90% of women and I tell you they want it, but they don't know how to be at first. That's why if you remember I said all of the love that you want has to start from you. There and it's it not a cockiness. It's you listening to yourself when you're tired. As simple as that. So I totally agree with you. Can you handle the man that you want? And he doesn't show up yeah. and just you handle it. What are you doing in your life today to be a captivating, endearing, and delightful woman? You ask yourself that and if you aren't doing that, then you can't even inspire the attraction from the man that you say you want. That's good. So stop being lazy. Period. That's good. That's good. So you see, oh, whatever else she's saying over here, they just have secular standards. Okay? Guys, if a man comes in, okay, what if the guy is an atheist and I can handle an atheist? Should I take that man? Should a, a believing woman take that man simply because you can handle it? It's not about that. I don't know. And then she's a coach herself. And then she's also single. She's been divorced as well. Okay? So no wonder all these people, they, I mean, they're just in the same situation. But I think what Stefan was saying, it was kind of like shots fired to, to Jesse Because I think she was trying to be like, okay, you know, trying to, I, I don't know, be all over the place uh, with Christian. And they were saying like, are you ready? Can you handle? I don't even think that she can handle that, okay? Because she, she's not even ready for any, for any man, okay? She needs to work on herself. She needs attitude adjustment. She definitely needs that. Yeah, so they're out here coaching the relationships and everything. Like, no, man, this, the, the scripture is simple. Everything is clear, okay? So those are the things that they need to be uh, they need to be telling us. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.